Good evening ladies and gentlemen, and here we are again. In today's video I will be teaching you how you can properly split your wallpaper from a single layer into multiple, and fill up the empty spaces they leave behind. Now, before you ask me why do we want to do this, allow me to simply show you why. So I've loaded up our image into the wallpaper and editor, and let's just say I want to make the right arm move up or down. Notice that when I'm telling it to move up or down, that the background moves along with the sword. That is simply because Wallpaper Engine cannot distinguish between the foreground and the background, or in other words, between the sword and the space behind it. It's all within a single image and layer. You can minimize this effect greatly, however, as a result, you cannot make the sword go up and down a lot. So this is why we want to split our image into multiple layers. Now, let's try the same thing with the sword into a separate layer. As you can see, it's much better, but now there's empty space in the background. That's not what we want at all. And look at the end of the arm. That doesn't look right at all either. This is why we want to fill up the empty spaces left behind when we cut our image into layers, to avoid having these weird distortions. So with this example and explanation out of the way, let's talk about how to do this properly. For the tutorial's sake I will be using GIMP and I will also be explaining it in GIMP. If you are using another tool like Photoshop or Paint, I'm afraid the technical side of the explanation will not be of much help to you. We will start by opening GIMP and importing our image. Before we do anything, you might already notice that my toolbox has a few more options than yours. In order to get the same setup as me, you will have to go to Edit, Preferences, Interface, Toolbox and uncheck the Use Tool Groups, or simply follow along with the screen. And whilst we're busy setting up GIMP, there's also one last important thing to uncheck. In the Free Select tool, which we will be using a lot, there's a box checked that says Anti-Aliasing. We want to uncheck this box as it causes pixels to disappear when we separate them into layers. Now with the settings out of the way, let's begin! I will be starting with the free select tool. It's the lasso tool in your toolbox. Simply envelop the part you wish to separate into a different layer. That's all there is to it. Now, whilst I will be cutting our wallpaper up into multiple layers, allow me to explain my thought process. When it comes to cutting up your image into layers, you need to think in which order they will be. When it comes to layers, there will always be one on top of the other, meaning that in this case, when we cut off the arm from the rest of the body, one layer has to be on top. Now, when the wallpaper is stationary, this is not a problem. However, when things start to move, as I showed you earlier, that is where we start getting problems. So we have to fill up this empty space left behind. Now, why is the order of layers important? Remember in the example earlier how the arm just randomly cut off and started playing on top of Leona? This is also the space that needs to be filled up. The question then becomes, which layer do I have to add in in order to fix this? Do I need to change the layer of the body or the arm? In this situation, it would be the arm. That is because you can clearly see in the depth of the image that Leona's right shoulder, to which this arm is attached to, is on the back side compared to the rest of her body. As a rule of thumb, the, lay the lowest layers or layers in the back are the layers that need to be adjusted, not the layer in the front, because then the extension will override the layer behind it. Now that we've successfully enveloped our character Leona through our selection tool, we have to set her into a different layer. There are two ways to do this. The easiest is to right click the selection, then go to select, float, then on the right side of your GIMP you will notice a second floating layer. Right click this layer, then select to new layer and voila, you've separated your single image into multiple layers. So we currently have pulled our character out from the background. However, as you can see, there is still background put together with our character. To fix this, simply remove the background from the character the same way as we just did using the free tool, separating it into a different layer. So let's do that real quick. Thank you. 
now that all background layers are separated from our character, let's bring them back to a single one. Make sure to set the background layers to visible and hide all other layers. Right click on the layers on the right side and select merge layers. Then press OK and voila, we've successfully separated our character from the background. Alright, so here we are. Now, how do we fix this broken mess of a background? Quite simple. First, we select the Select by Color tool and simply press the empty space left behind. Keep in mind, make sure you have the selected layer you want to edit on the right side. If you have the wrong one selected, it's going to get very weird, so make sure you have the right one selected. You'll notice we have a perfect selection of our empty space. Now, whatever we do, we won't edit anything outside of this selection. We can draw and erase as much as we want, but the unselected background will remain. Next up, we select the clone tool. Kind of speaks for itself. You select part of the image and you clone it somewhere else. Press Ctrl left click to set the area you wish to copy and simply left click to paste the copied area. Now we want to go around the edges of our selection and copy the edge and paste it on the side. Make sure you do not drag but click multiple times. Repeat this process for every edge of your selection. Alright, so now we have copied everything, but it actually looks quite horrible. So, how do we fix this? Simple, we use the healing tool. This tool works almost the exact same way as the clone tool does. Control left click to set up an area and control left click to paste it. The healing tool actually tries to paste the textures of a copied area onto the new area. So, we select a vague part of our image, the less complexity the better, then we simply repeat what we did with the clone tool. Now that we have blurred the textures, it's time to remove the selection. Press Ctrl plus Shift plus A to remove your current selection. You'll notice a distinct line running between the part where we blurred and the already existing background. We'll remove this using the healing tool as well. Once again, grab a non-complex part of the image and blur out this line. Almost done. I have one last tool to show you. As you might have noticed, a few of the lines that have been drawn on the background have noticeable gaps between them. To fix this, we will use the smudge tool. The smudge tool attempts to smudge out a part of the image in the direction you are giving. Simply left click and drag into the direction you wish for it to continue. And voila, we're done with the background. Now, you'll notice that it's not as good as the rest of the background, but that's not a problem. Remember that there is an entire character in front of this area. Only when there is movement will this space be visible and most of it won't even be seen. Next up, we have to split our character into separate layers as well. Fortunately, the process for this is the exact same as I just described, so there's no need for any more explanation on this front. However, I will run sped up footage of me separating the character into multiple layers for those who wish to see the entire process or those guys who just like to watch another guy draw a line. So let me get to work for a bit.
and we're done. Now we just need to export our images. To do this, simply select the layer you wish to export on the right side and press Ctrl plus C to copy it and Ctrl plus Shift plus V to paste it. This will open the layer in a separate canvas. Next, simply press Ctrl plus Shift plus E to export and a new window should pop up. Tick all the boxes to minimize your odds of getting any exporting issues. Simply give it a fancy name and voila, you've separated your layer into a separate image. Repeat this for every single layer that you have and then you're done. Before I go, I want to give a few small tips in case everyone uh, manages to butt into them in when they're working with GIMP. For example, if you're using the free select tool and you've accidentally closed the selection or you've made one that you want to undo, pressing backspace will remove your last set point. Another thing that's worth of note to be mentioned is that when you're going to copy effects in Wallpaper Engine itself, sometimes it doesn't like it if the size of the images don't exactly line up. So the best way to uh, resolve this issue is to simply make sure all layers are of the same size. This can be done quite easily through GIMP. On the right side you will see that all your layers will be ordered nicely. Simply uh, right click on them and you'll see the option uh, layer image to size. Uh, simply press that one and all your layers will have the same size and resolution as the original image was. And lastly, another quick tip I would like to give to you. If you have ever find yourself importing your layers into Wallpaper Engine and you notice that there's grey lines or those weird lines on the edges of your layer, the problem is that your wallpaper hasn't been blurred out on the edges. Simply uh, select one of the blur tools within uh, GIMP, uh, either the healing or the smudge or the blur tool and just go around the edges. This will pretty much just simply blur out the edges and you'll notice that once you re-import them back into Wallpaper Engine that that weird grey line is gone. Keep this in mind should you ever encounter it. The next step is importing all layers into Wallpaper Engine and actually starting the animating process. However, I will leave that to the next video as this one is already getting kind of long. I hope this video was helpful or entertaining in any way and I hope I will see you in the next one.